Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for tuning in to the Dean Show. This is a special episode. We're going to be talking about the Eid. What is Eid? The significance of Eid. Why do we practice Eid? What are the, some of the practices during Eid? All of this. And there are many innocent children dying in Gaza and other parts of the world. And now we're having this joyous occasion. So how can we, for all those who are being oppressed, also, what can we do to help? What can we do to help during these troubling times. All of this and more with my next guest here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is The Dean Show. 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 This is the Dean, this is the Dean Assalamu peace be with you. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the Dean Show, Eid. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Yes. Eid is here now, and many people now, we cater to a lot of the not yet Muslims. Many of the Muslims now also now, it's that time of the year where we're going to be celebrating. So people want to know, what are these Muslims celebrating? What's it all about? We're just getting through the Ramadan. Can you talk to us a little bit about Eid? Bismillah rahman rahim Eid is a term that relates to the Arabic word from Ada Ya'ud, something that keeps coming back. And if we go back to the essence of the presence of Muslims on earth, it's all about acts of worship toward God. So we are in constant reflecting on how we can keep worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the celebration that comes after finishing an act of worship toward God. If you recall the Prophet's words, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he mentioned about Friday being the Eid on a weekly basis for Muslims. And there's nothing else on that day but the Friday noon prayer, Salat al-Jumu'ah. So for that act of worship, it is something to be celebrated. If we look at the month of Ramadan, we are celebrating after we finish fasting, that we have done our act of worship toward God. And the theme behind all that, we are celebrating the revelation of the Quran from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu and then to humanity to follow up on that. So the essence behind the celebration of Eid is that even after Hajj, for example, when people finish pilgrimage, we celebrate that. So we do an act of worship. We are grateful to Allah that he gave us a chance to reach out to him through ways that he will be pleased with us and we celebrate for that. Now let's back it up. We just finished the Ramadan, right? Yes. So now is this in line with the tradition of all the prophets that every prophet, they worship the one creator, not the creation, and then they fasted? And then they, are we, is this something now that's, that uh, is new? Sure. Or is this something, a tradition that we're following that's from the original way? We believe that there are four components that were always the same between all prophets and messengers that were sent by God. We believe that all prophets and messengers came to tell people about God. The second thing, to worship Him alone. The third is to invite people to that which is of bringing uh, benefit and preventing harm. And number four, the line of ethics and morals. So under the line of worshiping one God, we believe it is something that connects with people and the major basics, if it was prayer or if it was charity or if it was fasting. And the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah is very clear, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. So fasting, or you who believe, has been ordained on you the way it was ordained on people prior to you. Now there might be differences in the way practices are being made from one generation to another as far as the messages from the time of the uh, Musa عليه السلام or to the time of Isa عليه السلام to the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in details. But the essence, the theme is, is always there. So it is not something new. It is an extension of the same idea of how to worship and reach out to God. And tell us now, what, what, what are some of the, the practices during this Eid from when you get up in the morning and now sure. throughout the whole day, how many days does it last? Sure. For the uh, Fitr or Eid al-Fitr that we are in after Ramadan, it is about a prayer that people should be ready for. Of course, from the Maghrib of the day before, uh, you start what we call a takbir right after when you finish uh, Salat al-Maghrib, and then after Isha, and then after Fajr, it is about, as Allah said, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَهَدَاكُمْ So you would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which He guided you for, worshipping Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after you finish uh, Maghrib, you start making Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar as 
a celebration that you have declared there is nothing more greater than Allah. He is the one to be worshipped. And you do this until the Fajr of the morning of the Eid. It's different, it stays longer in the Eid of Al-Adha. It goes with what we call Ayam al-Tashriq, when people are in Mina. So it extends three more days. But for Eid al-Fitr, it stops after Salat. Actually, when people, when the Imam goes to deliver Salat al-Eid uh, in public. People in the morning, the first thing they need to do is just to break the fast. Actually, this is how you celebrate. You finish, so you should not delay breaking your fast after Fajr. Like, you're not fasting at that day. And then you get yourself ready for the prayer itself. It is meant to be taken outside the mosque. So you can host as many people. The Prophet, وسلم, it was narrated that he would bring women, elderly, children, everyone is to come to this joyful, uh, joined uh, act of worship between people. People are to dress well, to smell well, and make sure that they are in the best looking uh, for their Lord to celebrate that. And of course, social gathering, you have to be neat and you have to be looking nice. The uh, etiquette is that people sit down and wait for the prayer, making also takbir. And these words of takbir, uh, it is the same declaration of what all this life is all about. We are here to to kabbirullah ala mahadakum, to praise Allah for that which He guided us for. Then there will be the call for the prayer. There is no adhan for it. There is no iqama like regular, you know, uh, time we do for regular salah. But rather, the imam will take the lead and he will perform a prayer which is made of two rak'at. What's also different about this prayer is that it's filled with takbir too. So when you enter the first takbirah, which is called takbirah al-ihram, that's when you enter salah with, you follow that by seven additional takbirat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and you do that seven times, raising your hands every time with that. And then when you stand for the second rak'ah, you add another five. So it's all about takbir and praising God. Also, the khutbah at the time of the Eid is something that relates to that which is of the uh, needed issues of the community to the public. So the Imam, after when he is done with the prayer, he will take and deliver a khutbah, uh, remind people of these issues that are important to them, including relating to other Muslims around the world, especially in these tough times that they are having, uh, you know, hardships around the world. And this is the time that we uh, see significant number of Muslims coming and attending the uh, khutbah, the Salat al-Eid. So the message should be universal. The message should be inviting people to practice Islam. And hopefully it will be a reason for them to commit later on. So that's interesting. Now the takbir is what, uh, how would you define takbir, this word? It is Allahu Akbar. God is great. It's a declaration that nothing is greater than God. And that should lead you into understanding that life is to be all and total surrender and submitting to Him. Did Jesus, peace be upon Him, who we love and revere, is one of the mightiest messengers, did He make this declaration, God is great, God and is greater than anything? Indeed, we believe that is the standard for all prophets and messengers. All of them? Yes. Including the last and final messenger? Indeed. Thank you, thank you. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show, celebrating Eid. We'll be right back. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Deen Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Greetings of peace to everybody all around the globe that's tuning in to the Deen Show. This is the Deen Show. Back here on the Deen Show with our special guest, and we're talking about Eid. Now, let's back it up a little bit. Fasting's finished. Uh, we're getting done with that. You get a lot of momentum. You get really motivated during Ramadan. So we don't want this to fizzle away. How can we keep the momentum going for all year round? Well, Ramadan is meant to be more like a faith station, that it should give you the dose. You start by the relativity to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that whoever fasts Ramadan and followed it by six of Shawwal. So the fasting should not vanish from your daily encounters and then it is matched to be you know the whole year as if it is being fast because if you multiply things by 10 times 30 times 10 that's 300 and then 6 times 10 that's 60 so total of 360 which is between the lunar calendar that's where it is so you keep all the diverse ways of uh, engaging ibadah and worship to God even if it was in fasting and then after that even you know the nafila or the additional uh, things that are to fast Mondays or Thursday. But uh, if Ramadan is meant to celebrate the revelation of the Quran through fasting, which 
gives you a chance to rise in your spiritual relationship with God, uh, honoring the revelation of the Quran, this should reflect on a peace that comes within your heart. And that's where it is mentioned to be in Laylatul Qadr, which we celebrated, alhamdulillah, yesterday. At the end of the verse in Surah Al-Qadr, it says, Salamun hiya hatta matla al-fajr. So this peace that you are able to enjoy and feel throughout the month of Ramadan, peaked at the night of Al-Qadr or the decree, should give you this tranquility that should go along with you throughout the whole year till next year, inshallah ta'ala. And this is the relationship where you combine submitting to God, surrendering to Him, and having peace, which both are in the title of Islam itself, to submit and then you fight peace in that. So it should reflect an tranquility inside, and that peace within yourself should reflect on the way you conduct yourself with Allah, a relationship within your own self and with people around you. Someone says, look, I caught the month the 20, on the 27th, and I'm banking on the thousand you know, uh, the, the months. months better than, than you know, uh, so all, I'm getting all my worship in on this month, and then they go back to maybe to the bar, to the nightclub, and they bank on this one night. It is a matter of how can you utilize acts of worship to make difference. As Allah said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Salah should prevent people from engaging that which is of fahsha, you know, filthiness of acts, yeah, any social, uh, you know, diseases, al-munkar, that's which is evil. So we hope that people, if they are sincere, when they come into Ramadan, and we invite everyone, regardless what their background, to come experience this pleasure of connecting with Allah. And it will cash back into positive approach toward the ibadah, act of worship in general. No one is immune from falling into sins. But let it be known that the Prophet told us, sallallahu The best among those who commit sins, that they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The doors of uh, repentance are open and let everyone make of Ramadan a phase that will give him better strength to believe in himself that he can do better and inshallah change his lifestyle, lifestyle to that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you mentioned the salat, this is that connection five times a day and sincerity in it. This should be enough now if you're sincere in it that this will ward off you know, you going back to any bad things that you're doing, evil things, and if your heart is connected to the hereafter, then you probably won't want to be in places that are displeasing to your Creator, right? It goes both ways. Uh, there is something that you have to let go, those evil things, so you can enjoy the beauty of the good things. It goes both ways. But we say, if someone is, let us say, you know, engaging some bad things, we believe that if he invests in good things, all types of good, you know, acts of worship, if it was prayer, if it was charity, if it was fasting, you know, the non-obligated, you know, nafila, it builds a mountain of hasanat that will go against the mountain of sayyat or bad deeds that he has. And Allah said in the Quran, "Inna al-hasanat yuzhibna sayyat," that the good deeds will wash away the bad deeds. And there's a scale at the day of judgment: more good deeds versus bad deeds. So more good deeds, you will go to heaven. Plus, you are going to enjoy the sweetness of these acts of worship. And hopefully, inshallah, it will be a reason for you to let go of these bad deeds. How can we balance it out now? Eid is supposed to be a very joyous occasion, and we're supposed to be celebrating, but we see innocent children being killed, massacred, you know, women um, also in, in, in the mix of all this. And now it brings tears to your eyes, your, your heart breaks. Indeed. So how do you balance this out now, Sheikh? The way that we are watching now what's happening, if it was in Gaza, if it was in Syria and other parts of the world, your heart is torn into pieces, seeing these children who are supposed to be having new clothes on the day of Eid, having some candy, visiting family members, but yet they are being buried without even access to cemeteries, without even access to safety through, during the burial itself. Uh, funerals are being bombarded. People, when they are trying to seek shelter in the streets, they are being bombarded. And this is something that is very tough and hard to process. But we believe that, inshallah, the people who are going through these hardships, that they find in the concept of worship behind Eid. That's the uh, beauty of giving them sabr and patience to cope. Uh, destiny will roll. The Qadr of Allah will never change. But faith helps you cope with that, inshallah. We're going to get back with more on this uh, topic and the Eid and 
how you can make dua and what you can do to help those who are suffering, who are being oppressed, the innocent men, women, and children all over the world. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lie is by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on The Dean Show, Sheikh, now you being a community leader, you deal with a, a, a lot of different people from different cultures, backgrounds, religions, and you know very well a lot of the negative stereotypes that are associated with Islam. So what, what do you say when some people try to make Islam out to be like the boogeyman, that Islam is against a certain people, a certain race, you know, uh, and is against peace? My uh, advice to all those people, you know, after 9-11, we have seen a huge... Uh, difference in the numbers of non-Muslims attending the mosque, actually learning about Islam. For example, we have a lot of students that come from all type of universities around us in Chicago. And now uh, Islam is number one pick for their um, world religion or comparative religion or even churches bringing, you know, uh, congregants or um, high schools or even middle schools bringing students. Uh, we always leave them with one uh, piece of advice. Ignorance is the enemy. Uh, the, the more that you distance yourself from the truth from the people themselves and you rely on propaganda from other people, then you are inviting ignorance to dictate that which is in your conscience about other people. So as the first revelation that was revealed on the Prophet said, read, iqra, we are asking people around us to read about us, from us, from our sources, from the Quran and the Sunnah, and hopefully that will change their perspective about what Islam is all about. So tell us, Bor, let's go back to what we were talking about before you, we went to break. Break. We mentioned we have innocent kids Indeed. You know, that are losing their future. You know, the, the um, death rate is in the hundreds. And these innocent kids, every, anyone who has a, a daughter or a son and they see some of these images is just heartbreaking. And, and even the ones that are injured, yes. many of them, you know, they'll probably never be the same again. So wh what can we do now to, to help? Indeed. They're, that's their struggle for their freedom, for their equality, for their right to live, for not to be under siege. But from our side, we have a liability. As the Prophet mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Muslimu Akhul Muslim, that the Muslim is the brother from you. You owe him certain uh, liabilities of standing next to him. So it is my duty to start by feeling with him and then um, remembering him in my special prayers. And the power of dua is great. But then it needs to also make sure that if there's an orphan, I want to make sure that he has food to eat. If there is someone with injury that he needs, you know, the medicine, if it was the antibiotic or if it was the anesthesia. People are being operated on in Syria and Gaza without anesthesia because of siege and lack of access to them. So uh, donations that might bring these, and alhamdulillah we are blessed with many relief agencies that are working with international other agencies to bring these, you know, aid to these people. So that which you can, if it was writing an article in a newspaper to speak the truth, uh, if you are to take a demonstration and, you know, uh, raise a flag of uh, freedom and equality, everything counts. And this has come into your role and uh, responsibility. And uh, you are not asked to uh, be seen and judged on the outcome. You are asked on your effort. Have you done your homework? And alhamdulillah, we have many venues that we can do that, inshallah. What, are the, what other advice uh, do you give us to all those people who are tuning in from all over the, the globe for this joyous occasion of Eid? Well, it is a moment to celebrate ibadah. And we celebrate ibadah by continuing the ibadah itself. So it is not something that Ramadan is finished, so I'm going to stop coming to the masjid. Ramadan is finished. Uh, I'm not going to wake up for Fajr anymore and go to the mosque. If you did it in Ramadan, it means that you are able to do it, inshallah. Ramadan is meant to help you train yourself into new habits that will get you closer to Allah. The fasting is not meant to stop only from food or drink. The fasting trained you to stop your eyes from looking at haram, your ears at listening to haram, your legs taking you to any haram. And if you are able to do that during Ramadan, inshallah, it will be with you after Ramadan. 
Uh, real quick before we depart, is it true that some of the people who were tested the most were the prophets and then those closest to them? And does that mean now that God Almighty uh, loves you, He's testing you? How, how can we take when, when people sure. are going through trials and tribulations, how, do, how should we look at this? Sure. It is mentioned very clearly in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا إِبْتَلَىٰ If Allah loves someone, He will test him. Why? Because if Allah knows there's a certain level for you in heaven, an honorable one, and your own deeds are not helping you reach that, and Allah loves you, He will bring these tests and trials to you. So you would be able to uh, relate to that with patience and being more close to Allah. Your prayers will be different, your dua, your, uh, the way you pray and concentrate and practice khushu'ah, and that will make you closer to Allah. Even the worship of the heart, you know, the way you relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your heart. So the good, Allah does not create something 100% evil, it is about things that will be seen in the outcome. And if the outcome is heaven, alhamdulillah for all the tests and the trials. Alhamdulillah. So uh, is your masjid now where you're at, your mosque, is it open to any person who wants to come in and learn about Islam? Is Islam exclusive just to a certain people? Is it for everybody, be it he a Christian, a Jew, a Hindu? Is, are your doors open to anyone who wants to come in? Mosquefoundation.org and then they can all call us at any time if it was an individual, if it was a group, if it was a church, if it was a synagogue, if it was a temple, if it was students, everyone is welcome. We have beautiful presentations to give about Islam. Let people come and learn from the Muslims themselves. Thank you so much. May You're Allah, welcome. the creator of the heavens and earth, bless your Eid. Bless your family. Well, you yeah. too thank and you. your family too. Um, thank you so much. And thank you for tuning in to the Dean Show Eid. You got to know the significance of it. The practices do it. And now, as the last and final messenger sent to mankind, of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, The one who repents from sin is like the one who has no sin. You've been repenting to the creator alone this whole month. And now you've gotten a momentum. Don't let it slow down. Continue to do good. Continue to develop yourself to be the best human me being possible. You've used this month of Ramadan as a catalyst now to take off with it. Don't let it slow down. Continue to be good. Continue to work for the hereafter by doing good deeds, by developing yourself to be the best. That's right. And don't slow down and continue to make dua. Continue, continue to make dua for all those suffering and oppressed innocent men, women, and children out there. And before you ever complain, think about those who have less and wish to have what you have. And we'll see you next time. Follow us on the Facebook. Join us and keep up with our show. Support the Dean Show. We'll see you next time. God willing, until then, peace be with you.